Um, good morning, it's Terry Ashford. It's January 11th on Saturday, 2.14 a.m. And I am reporting on incidents regarding myself. Uh, we are reporting on the... We need to find out a couple things regarding the incident... Um, regarding um, the library, Frederick Park... The Shepherd Park Library uh, that occurred on Friday, January the 10th. Um, the occurrence was one of Volts's security officers. His name is Cheney. Um, Officer Cheney. Officer Cheney entered into the library with two MPD officers. Uh, the two MPD officers, Terry Ashford is alleging and also looking into the possibility of these two officers setting up frame. Uh, frame of entrapment, frame of abuse, frames of falsification and fraud that was aimed uh, at a target, and the target was the journalist Terry Dwayne Ashford. At that same time, before we move on to at that same time, we want to uh, identify those two officers that was with um, library security, Cheney, Officer Cheney. Officer Cheney entered the library with two what appeared to be MPD officers disguised. At the same time, while that was going on, two other events were staged. The staging was to uh, encapture or entrap Terry Dwayne Ashford, the journalist. The target is Terry Dwayne Ashford, the journalist, the innocent person. That is the target because of police wanting control or those people around him wanting control. When he's a journalist, he knows what he can do. He's, he's not going to overstep his boundaries. All these people, men, have collaborated together in trying to entrap Terry Dwayne Ashford. There is no fear because we know exactly what we are doing. It all started with the Willis ordeal on Friday morning. The Willis ordeal on Friday morning included a, a D.C. resident by the name of Johanna, a library staffer. Those two particular individuals had been using stalking procedures in order to follow Terry Dwayne Ashford and set up sex trafficking scheme catered to a particular community. That sex trafficking scheme was racial. And the journalist reported on the incident. On that morning, he cited uh, the person who had been stalking him, signed to study room number one. And uh, w the journalist thought he had reserved study room number one for himself. He went to Mrs. Willis and asked Miss Willis if he had a study room Reserved after she had set up the sex trafficking scheme, Miss Willis got scared. And when she got scared, she got extremely anxious in talking and answering the questions uh, that I had regarding the room. Miss Willis then began to get belligerent with Terry Dwayne Ashford. Terry Dwayne Ashford informed the nice lady to please pull herself together because he's asking questions. He needs the answer. He's asking the direct questions that he needed the answers for, and he would love to have direct answers. And for her to pull herself together, be professional with him, and to remember this for the future. Miss Willis and I have never had any type of issues before. And we resolved the issue at that particular time, moved forward on, and we've seen each other during, throughout the course of the day. Brian got involved, and we have the two police officers coming in with uh, Library Officer Cheney under Larry Votes, by which we already have a federal lawsuit against. We have members of the society. We have the young man that was sitting at computer number 11. Both times we've had uh, the criminal man sitting, sitting at computer number 11. The man who came in defense to Miss Willis that yesterday morning was sitting at computer number 11 and making eye contact with Terry Dwayne Ashford, who was sitting across from him, snarling at the journalist. No words were passed. Nothing was said to that man, but it was indicated that we weren't afraid. That was the morning of January the 10th on a Friday morning. Computer number 11. Terry Wayne Ashford returned. They had another man sitting at computer number 11. That is the black man that was following now and is considered a stalker of Terry Dwayne Ashford. That particular black man has been stalking Terry Dwayne Ashford for over six months now at that exact same library. He drives a brown Nissan SUV. Uh, he has been uh, seen parking wherever Terry Dwayne Ashford parks. The next day he goes and he parks the exact same place. Today, 
On January the 10th, that particular man ensued in a fight out near Terry Dwayne Ashford's pure vehicle. At the same time in which the police officers were entering the building with security, library security officer Cheney. They need to identify the two undercover police officers. They entered the, the library with library security staff Cheney. At the same time, while that was going on, that is just one incident that was going on that was been ensued that was to assist the frame. Frame by which Terry Dwayne Ashford argues was in progress with Officer Cheney, secu Library Security Cheney, and the two officers who he brought to the library with him. We are looking into whether those two officers were MPD officers working in retaliation. Working in retaliation to Officer Four driving vehicle, truancy vehicle 489, who has been identified as Officer Cheney, batch number 5243. Looking at the fact that these particular officers may be retaliating against the journalist for reporting on Officer Johnson, batch number 5243. Also participating because of the statements made regarding blubber that morning. Internal statements, statements that are not made out loud, statements that are made in the, the journalist's own secrecy by which the officers are eavesdropping and then retaliating behind the scene. Looks like you're eavesdropping or getting you in some trouble, isn't it, officers? The officers are eavesdropping and then retaliating based on what they hear in the eavesdropping. I made a comment regarding the blubber of a fat man yesterday and all of the fat police officers tried to retaliate. Let's go ahead now expand a little bit on that blubber. The man who drives the brown Nissan posing as Terry Dwayne Ashford, his respective neighborhood. Let's now look at Casey Effer, the whiter male staffer who ensued in another event that was noticeable by Terry Dwayne Ashford, the journalist and the targeted victim. There was one man that waited on Terry Dwayne Ashford to enter into the library. January the 10th, we shall pull the video of the library and that video that we pull show, show the parking lot. That video will show the man waiting parked in the very first or second spot adjacent to the library drop box. Man appeared to be a brown skinned Muslim wearing gray. That man also drove either a the black car that was parked on the end or the silver park parked uh, second to the end. Particular black man was working with Casey. We anticipate that the editing task has been diverted from someone inside of the library to of these black men who Casey may have trained. What we're seeing here is the swapping, swapping of the task that we have identified was being done by the library staff. As the library staff has been caught carrying out particular activity against uh, public citizens who entered the library, the police has intervened and is, has, been, has trained their own to carry out the same activities. Now, so now we're looking at the black men, looking at the black man, yes, the one that entered into the library, entered into the studio, into the dark studio with Casey. Looking at him as being the one who was trained to carry out the editing activity that Casey was doing beforehand. Looking at the black man sitting at computer number 11 in the afternoon, it's a stalker who's carrying out mischievous activity within his own community who he expects that particular activity to be converted through video by the police. MPD. MPD are designing people within the community whose information will be swapped to Terry Dwayne Ashford. That man in the brown SUV, Nissan, will get into a fight with some person out in the community and the police would then convert the images as being me. We already know what you think you're about to do. We're about to do it to you. The black man sitting at computer number 11 by the police will be posed as Terry Dwayne Ashford, his respective community. And images will be re-superimposed. He does in his community, the MPD officer that's participating had intended for that to be posed as Terry Dwayne Ashford. Let's give you an example. The black man that was sitting at computer number 11, that's just one of them. Go in and rob a store, could go and rob a store. This is a hypothetical example to show you 
that we know what we're talking about. That black man could go and rob a store, but the police would do is use an editor, particularly the editor that has been trained by Casey to re-image that robbery as Terry Dwayne Ashford. That is a result of the rift. The Officer Johnson, batch number five, two, four, three, drives truancy vehicle 489, who retaliated against a police complaint and may have crashed my window and stolen my iPhone. Same officer follows Terry Dwayne Ashford to his workout facility at the Tacoma Aquatic Center. And we argue that that particular officer may have the stake, the investment into this particular crime. We also argue that that particular officer is ensuing the street mentality into the crimes, into the crimes that had been white collar. All of the editing had been done for people who were doing non-violent, non-felony stuff, misdemeanor type stuff. We have now gone black with Officer Johnson, batch number five, two, four, three. And that brings in the street stuff, and that brings in the street man, which is the man that started a fight right out in front of Terry Dwayne Ashford's vehicle at, in the McDonald's parking lot. That man drives the brown SUV Nissan and has been stalking Terry Dwayne Ashford for over six months now. Close out to observations. The police officer who accompanied library security officer Cheney that day. Oh, I'm sorry, on January the 10th. The big, tall, bald-headed male with the beard made himself, made his way right across the street to the McDonald's, walked across the street to the McDonald's. Guess who walked to the McDonald's with him? Harry Dwayne Asher stood there with that police officer every second while he was in the store. Who also came was a Hispanic male that appeared to be making himself available to the police officer. Terry Dwayne Ashford was there. One of the men from the library then came over and spoke with the police officer. The police officer we allege now from that was set up and framed, was set up to get a Hispanic male. When we set him up to get a black one and we have the police officer identified. The police officer went over to the McDonald's. He was gonna reference the fight using his visit to the McDonald's to reference the fight by the fraud man in the brown SUV Nissan. That man who's driving the Nissan was posing as Terry Dwayne Ashford to have created a fight on the McDonald's parking lot. And the black male police officer was setting up a frame. The black male police officer was setting up a frame in order to appear that he went inside and spoke to somebody. He did not speak to anyone the reason why he didn't speak to anyone probably was because Terry Dwayne Ashford, the journalist, was right there watching him. This male police officer was accompanied by the library security under Larry Votes, who works under Larry Votes by the name of Officer Cheney. That particular officer was called by the library staffer named Johanna, who is working with Miss Willis. We need to identify the two undercover police officers one black male and one black lighter-skinned female who was with 